In our lives, we all face adversity, mountains we must climb and rivers we must cross. Chad, Kelsey, Rick, and Patrick have spent the last two seasons of Sheep Shape showing us what it is to persevere and overcome, fully aware of their weaknesses, but unwilling to let it define them. With a new season comes new adventures. In season three, Chad Hall continues his travels with some of the original Sheep Shape members. But as the season moves on, Chad brings in new faces to carry the Sheep Shape banner and inspire everyone to conquer their own mountain. After making their flights to British Columbia, Chad Hall and Rick Carone prepare for the next leg of the journey. In Smithers, they will board a float plane for a flight into base camp, where they will begin their hunt for stone sheep and moose. While Chad and Rick are anxious to get moving, the weather has other plans. Well, they just gave us a weather update and uh, appears we're not going to be flying today, so we're going to have to go back into town and stay at the hotel for another night. Visibility is uh, pretty bad. and. Uh, so they're not going to chance flying. So we'll leave our stuff on the plane and we're going to give her, give her another try in the morning and hope for the best. But uh, that's part of coming up here late season is weather is pretty unpredictable and, you know, it is what it is. We won't be upset about it. We'll just uh, roll with the punches. Due to poor visibility, Chad and Rick are forced to delay their departure and return to their hotel in hopes of clear skies when they wake up. I'm just fired up. We got sunshine coming through the clouds. Now today the weather is improving and uh, the downside is yes, it was rain. Today the pre precip is in snow. So we got a report from the other end. It's not too bad, but we just got another one from in between about 50 miles short of destination. There it's down half a mile in snow. So we'll wait until nine o'clock and see if we get some better reports. Although the skies are clear at the dock, a pocket of snow threatens visibility along the flight path. The team continues to pack and waits. Those bags are bigger than what he, is. he figures, so we need to know how many pounds of feet he wants on there. I think he wants 400 pounds of feet on there. I don't know, we might want to send an in-reach to Logan, maybe talk to him, see what he wants to take off. Because he wants that grain. It's the most important thing that go on the plane is the grain. Uh, they have it in pounds, kilos. How much are we over total? 657 pounds. We have 100 left. Oh. In order to make room for the horse feed, the team will have to unload 500 pounds of excess weight. Eager to head out and make up for lost time, the team unloads quickly. With the weight cut and the weather clear, the plane takes off. But as the journey continues, the clear skies turn gray. The pilot tries an alternate route, but poor visibility and low fuel forced the team into yet another delay. Well, I absolutely dozed off and figured we were already here, but we're obviously not here. We, didn't, we couldn't get into camp. There's no visibility. We couldn't land, so we came over to another camp here to get fuel. We can't make it. He couldn't make it back. So it's not safe to try to get in there right now with no visibility. Yeah, I could tell it was we were going through some rough stuff just my stomach's churned upside down right now. <laughs> and it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. Got a lot it's freezing colder. here. Yeah. A little uh, 
a little colder than it was back in Smithers. You need more than a hooded sweatshirt, that's for sure. We're only five miles from where we needed to go. We couldn't get through that pass. Couldn't We've see. Been in the air a long time. Probably been in the air for two hours. We're going to be in another minimum thirty minutes, probably. If we, if we get to go where we're going. I don't know what the plan is. Maybe we'd even stay right here. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Part of the adventure, man. Yeah. That's why you come out here, man. You just don't know. You don't know what's gonna happen. This segment has been brought to you by Buck Knives, Edge of a Legend. So I'd encourage everybody to go on the Gunworks site and they have a rifle builder tool on there where you can go in and, and build your own rifle and customize it how you like it. Uh, the different options, different colors. You know, you can add the bipod, you can add the rangefinder, so you can buy the whole package at once. But the big thing is, is you can go on there and completely build the rifle just like you like it. Um, this just so happens to be the one that I like. It's kind of their Mountain X version. Uh, it's a Magnus stock, a fluted barrel in, uh, in the 7LRM, which is the Gunworks cartridge. Gunworks, 1,000 yards out of the box. Several thousand miles from home, Chad and Rick finally make it through the snow to base camp. After multiple delays, Todigan and his crew of guides are a welcome sight. Chad and Rick are ready to hit the ground and begin preparing for their hunts. It will be a little under two weeks before the float plane returns to pick them up, and they will do everything in their power to make sure they don't leave empty-handed. Just landed here at uh, the lake and uh, our base camp and want to make sure that the Matthews is dialed in and so we're going to go ahead and just shoot it right out at 20 yards and make sure that it's dead on because we've got a literally a cow moose at the end of this lake right now and it's the heart of the rut so at any given time we could have a have a big bull. Let's hope she's on right here. 20 yard pin on there. And here we go. That'll work. Perfect. That'll work. Rick's Matthews bow is dialed in, and his arrows are ready. Meanwhile, Chad works with his guide, Tidigan, to pack up for the horseback ride up the mountain. We got room in one pack box that we can throw some yeah, we can start. Pull, I can pull some stuff out of this bag over here. Maybe we can eliminate that bag. That's the knife I'm carrying we'll we, once we go to backpack. That'll be good. I'll drop the survival knife. You can skin with that. Sweet. Okay. I think we're ready. Tomorrow morning, first light. We'll hit the trail. With all the necessary preparations made and the bags packed, Chad and Rick settle in for the night and share a meal with their guides before the first day of their hunt. The sun is creeping over the mountains in the back country of British Columbia. Under the glow of coast lights, the horses are loaded up for the trek to mountain camp. Before heading out, Chad and Rick take a moment to review their routes with the guides. Soon, they will split up and begin their separate hunts. If you don't want to go right to the top. And then I usually camp right in here. Yeah. At the base of this ridge. And then get up on on here. There's some good stuff down in here. You should be. We'll be looking at for a horseback right in. You're gonna be about four hours. Yeah. And camp. then from sheep camp to where we would spike, how long a hike we're gonna have. That's 45 minutes up to the an hour up to the saddle and then then you're hunting so then you just pick your way. Okay, that's not so bad. I'm ready. You ready? Let's see if we can find something. That's that's ready a long time ago. I was born ready, buddy. <laughs> Alright. That's cool. Let's do it. The team has planned their routes and made their final packing adjustments. Just as the light breaks through the trees, Chad hits the trail, ready to begin his sheep hunt. Meanwhile, Rick is resting at camp after waking up with an upset stomach. Sitting here at camp, and Logan's just here at the kitchen table, very opposite side of the lake. Shooter bull moose, so we gotta get things rolling, try to make a plan. Nice you ready to go? 
This segment has been brought to you by Wild Sheep Foundation. This segment is brought to you by Gunworks, 1,000 yards out of the box. While Rick prepares to cross the lake, Chad and Todd again make their way up to mountain camp. Near a stream, they stop to glass the surrounding landscape. Tadigan has ridden this route before and wants to be sure they do not miss a chance at sheep early in the hunt. The sheep, they tend to travel around this knob. They seem to have a little circuit that they go around, but they come right around the front of this knob. And sometimes they'll find goats kind of scattered in those rocky bluffs. So. Yeah. But with that snow up top, we can find goats or sheep down low, even in the trees. So we got to keep our eyes peeled as we move out of the timber, okay. going up into camp. We'll probably check it one or two more times on the way up. Recent snowfall has the sheep moving down the mountain. Chad and Todd again stay alert. Meanwhile, Rick and his guide Logan have crossed the lake and have set up in a nearby meadow. They call in hopes of seeing the bull moose they have previously spotted from camp. Sun is rising, and Rick will be heading to camp soon. As Rick's luck seems to be running out for the morning, Chad's day is just beginning. We got some rams right on the walk up, or right up. I see six. Let me get my spot and scope out. Let me see what we got here. Well, it's always good when you get rams on the right end. Makes it promising. While Chad keeps an eye on the sheep, Todd again prepares his Swarovski spotting scope for a closer look. Some of them look pretty heavy horned from here. Let's see what we got. We saw those sheep up there, so we just unpacked the horses. Because uh, we had a lot of our stuff on the back of the pack horses, so got our stuff ready, just had a little snack. We're gonna go hike up and try to get in position. Those rams aren't really going anywhere. They're gonna stay on that sunny side of the mountain pretty much all afternoon, so we're just gonna take our time and see if we can get the wind right and close the distance a little bit. So we're about 1,200 yards from now. We can get half of that. Uh, that would be good, so. I think we're just gonna head, work our way through up the rocks here straight up to the top of the mountain, we're a little bit above them. Then we'll come along the ridge line on the backside till we get close enough and we'll set up the scope, take a double check on the rams and hopefully everything works out. Looks like, it looks like a good one in there, for sure. Hopefully we don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chad and Todd again are closing the gap between themselves and a group of rams while they traverse ridges and mountain lines. Rick and Logan work to figure out the moose in the meadow below. The wind is bad for us right now. Where should we go? <coughs> well, I don't know where he is, so it doesn't really make it. I think he's over to our left somewhere. He was headed that direction.
With no moose in sight and the wind working against them, Rick and his guide Logan head back across the lake to base camp. On the mountain, Chad and Todd again take a break from climbing to plan their next step. We just climbed about 1,800 vertical feet. I don't know, we've been probably two hours of hiking to get up. We're directly in line with where those sheep went over the other side. But the wind switched and set our back, so it's really bad right now for us to go on a straight line to them. So we're going to go around the other side of the mountain here and drop off in side hill, and the wind will be hitting the side of this mountain. It should block our scent. And uh, we'll see if where they're at. We've lost sight of them for about 45 minutes, so we'll keep going. The rams have moved, and the wind has shifted. Chad and his guides must take an indirect route and hope they can catch up with the sheep again. This segment has been brought to you by Matthews Archery. Rick and Logan are back at base camp after a slow morning in search of the bull moose. As the day cools down, a bull and cow emerge across the lake. Logan and Rick talk through their options. We're, We're like uh, matchmakers here. We called and brought these two moose together. We really did. That is so awesome. Um, do we go to her? We or do we go to him? Go to her. Okay. Let's say we paddle the shore and get up into the trees and then call. Do you think we'll be able to bring them into us with a call? We're not going to bring them away from that. Camp. Right. So, so the next question is, do we just go right, try to go right up to them in the boat with the paddle and hope for the best? If we could get over to these trees oh, okay. gotcha. and swoop down there and start grunting, he'd be like... Oh. Yeah. So you're saying go on the right and try to figure it out from there. Rick and Logan have opted to finalize their plans as they cross the lake. Speed is of the essence, and this is an opportunity they do not want to waste. They move quickly, grab their gear, and board the boat. Rick is going to try and shoot the moose with an arrow, adding to the challenges already at hand. In the mountains above, Chan moves in for what he hopes will be a shot at the stone sheep he has been tracking. Really laying down. While the sheep eat, Chad prepares himself and grabs his gunworks rifle, an instrument of precision made with these moments in mind. Here on this ridge. They're down in those wells down there. That strip of wells. Like way down. Yeah, that's where they are. See you. Oh man. That's the shooter. Chad has spotted a mature ram. Before he can shoot, he must get the go-ahead from Todd again, who will determine if the ram is legal. You can shoot him if right now if you want to. The ram is legal. Chad checks the distance of the shot. 800 and something yards. As Chad prepares to shoot, the ram dips behind a ridge and Todigan calls off the shot. They just fed out of sight. With no chance of a shot, Chad and Todigan have no choice but to regroup and plan their next move. I want us to sneak down the backside of the saddle. We should be able to cut off by, cut off about 400 yards off it. Yeah. They're coming towards us. Do we just wait? We'll set up a wait. We should be inside 300 yards before too long. I just want to get an age on that big ram before we shoot him, but... He looks good. He looks looks good. Chad and Todd again are determined to get another shot on the mature ram they have spotted. Several thousand feet below, with his Matthews bow in hand, Rick is closing in on the bull moose he spotted from base camp.
right at them. Turn the boat, kill the engine. Hopefully 50 yard shot. Rick is closing in on a mature bull moose, ready to do whatever it takes to bring it down. Chad and Todd again show similar determination as they work again to find the ram and make a shot. 375. Persistence has paid off. 375 yards is well within the range of Chad's gunworks rifle. This is the best opportunity Chad has been given so far. Now, he and Todd again must work together to pick a ram out of the group and ensure that it is a legal ram. There's two at the back? Yeah. The front one of those two. Keep your eye on him. I see the two and the, there's a little one. Yeah, the big one with him. That's him. Which one? Which one? Go for the two together. The sheep are moving quickly and the window of opportunity is fading. Chad and Todd again must identify the mature ram before it is too late. Next week on Sheep Shape, Chad and Rick hope to close their first day of hunting with shots on a bull moose and stone sheep. As the hunt continues, Rick is hit with pains of cancer and struggles to keep moving, while Chad battles a snowstorm on the mountain. The adventure continues next week on Sheep Shape.